I did a beard time lapse. So many people online have done this so, so well. So I wanted to see if I could do it myself. In particular, I saw this one video, this guy who walked across China while letting his beard grow, and it was like the coolest thing in the world. I was like, I have got to do that. But if you're like me, you always wonder, well, what do you do? You just take a photo and that's it? So I tried to use the scientific process a little bit, do a test and figure out what would work and what wouldn't. And I'm gonna share that with you today. So first, let's get to the time lapse. But that's not exactly how this whole thing started. This is the first attempt. What you have here is 65 photos, one taken every day over the course of just over two months. Now when you put those in a timeline that's 30 frames per second, that's a normal timeline here in the United States, that's only about two seconds, and that's not very long. In addition to that, the first ones had zero stabilization and looked like this. And it's basically unwatchable. So what I did is I took it into the computer, uh, into After Effects in particular, and ran some stabilization on it. And what I did is I stabilized it with two points, each eyeball. I put a point on each center of my eyeball, frame by frame, and you can stabilize it according to position, scale, and rotation. The result looks like this. Notice at least in this one, the eyes don't move at all, which is really cool. And the only problem is that it's only two seconds. I mean, this was so short. This took me two months every day taking photos. I wanted it to be longer than two seconds. So I put it into the timeline, uh, grouped the clips together, and then just expanded it. And then I got this. So essentially what you have there is it's just duplicating the clips many times. So you're seeing like three or four uh, of each individual frame and then it moves to the next one. It's just a simple cut. But you have the option of using a couple different blending techniques. Uh, so the first one that I tried was called frame blending. Frame blending is kind of neat because it just fades between the frames and that works in certain situations. I think it works okay in this one. Uh, but we also have another technique that we could try and that's called optical flow. Optical flow is essentially taking all of these frames and figuring out what the in-between images might be, right? It's, it's kind of doing a morph in between them. And that works okay if you're trying to slow down motion that isn't moving so much, but it doesn't work so well when you have dramatic changes. So if you notice here in this photo, uh, my arm is up in the corner of the frame, and then the next one it's not, and so it's trying to figure out where did that little bit of skin that was up here in this area go, and it's just kind of like moving it across my face. So it didn't work in that particular situation. But that's okay, I did a hybrid where I actually took optical flow on my face, masked that, and did frame blending behind me. Now the last step is that if you look at the footage, you can actually see a little bit of a flicker. For some reason, when my phone was taking photos, I didn't have a way to just lock it every time because I was pulling it out of my pocket, uh, standing on the countertop and taking the photo. Ones were all like this, standing <laughs> in the bathroom. Which by the way, I will get to best practices for this right at the end. And it changed the color temperature and exposure just a little bit each time. So I put on a filter called D-Flicker from Revision and it pretty much smoothed it all out perfectly. However, I still thought the background was distracting, so I took that extra step. I went into Photoshop and literally cut my face out of every shot. You can actually do this pretty quickly by using Select Mask and then Select Subject, and then you can go through and refine the edges step by step. In the end, this whole process on 60 shots took about three hours. So not a small time commitment, but not that long for cleaning up what is a pretty cool time lapse. Then I went and took shots only of the background all by themselves. I've taken a time lapse of all these towels for a background in a stop motion thing. Done. You're gonna fold all those back, right? I so am. Mm -hmm. and the work we go through for these things. Mm -hmm. And then put a little bit of a different filter on the background compared to my foreground and created something that looked like this. And then the last step to make it look exactly like what you saw at the very beginning was that I was actually in Final Cut Pro and I took a comic filter and put it on it because I thought it added just kind of a neat look to the whole thing, but you definitely don't have to do this. So there you go, that's how I did it.
right, now for the fun part. If you're gonna try this yourself, you might as well learn from my mistakes. So I'm gonna walk through a couple of the things that I definitely know didn't work. First, let me just show you the setup. When I started doing this, I was standing on top of my counter. This is, this is what the first ones were right here, ready? Which was really hard to balance and get the right framing every time, so I would put my hand behind me. I thought this was going to be a good technique, but it was definitely not an ideal technique. Secondly, I did at least know that lighting was key and I didn't want harsh shadows across my face. So what I thought was going to be a good idea was to just stand up in the bathroom mirror. Uh, unfortunately, you can see from my setup here, it was a terrible set of lights and one of them even kind of went out halfway through. So I, I would have improved that a little bit if I were to do it again. Try to come to this exact same position. I have a little stool right down there and then I have these lights right here so that when I stand up like so, uh, it's roughly equal. <laughs> oh my god, our bathroom is terrible. We're in the process of remodeling this thing. So I do think having a good location is important in part because it keeps consistent lighting on your face. Uh, I had it in the bathroom and half the time when I remembered this, it was either when I woke up or was in the shower or right before I was going to bed so I'd go and actually take the shot. I think the end product turned out okay though. I hope this gives you some ideas on your time lapse. Just as an update from Stone Age Man, I have been working on scripting out about 80 different videos. Because we're in quarantine, I don't have help with camera, um, but we're ramping up to produce a ton more videos. If you don't know what Stone Age Man is, maybe you could check out this video, or you could check out some of these other ones that I've produced as well. All right, make sure you're subscribed. Stay tuned, we'll see you in the next one.